white satin evening dress. And after the gala dinner, I thought it a good idea to go up to the drawing room and write a few letters. And I walked down quietly until I got to my stateroom. And just before going to my stateroom, A11, there was a bump. As I turned the handle of my room, there was another bump. As I got into my room, there was a third bump. I thought to myself, one of these bumps, sort of little pushes, not, nothing very violent. And I slipped on a coat over my white satin evening dress and went right out from my own stateroom because my stateroom had a door leading to the promenade deck. And as I got out on the promenade deck, I saw a large gray, well, it looked to me like a building floating by. Great big gray thing. But that building kept bumping along the rail. And as it bumped, it sliced off bits of ice. And ice fell all over the the deck. And I, and a great many of my foolish fellow, fellow passengers, we just picked up the ice and started to play snowballs. We thought it was fun. We asked the officers if there was any danger and said, no, nothing at all, nothing at all. Nothing at all, just a mere, mere nothing. We just hit an iceberg. It's nothing, nothing. I was in bed, and some man knocked at the door and said, Madam, get up. They're claiming that women and children should leave the ship. Put on your life belt. Get up. So I got out of bed. Now I promised my mother never to leave my little mascot. I thought nothing of danger, and the little mascot was left on my dressing table. I locked the bureau drawers and the cupboards. I took all the keys and then went forward on the same deck to the drawing room, A deck, and sat down comfortably in a big easy chair. As I sat there, wearing my steward came along. And I said, where him? He said, you go on in, kiss your trunks goodbye. I said, you think there's danger? Well, he said, I've got five children at home. I'm a bit worried. I believe I'd kiss my trunks goodbye. Oh, I said, for goodness sakes, go back and get my pig. It's on the dressing table. And I handed him the key to my stateroom and he came back with the pig and my fellow passengers looked at me in utter disgust so I had my little pig and I felt safe I made up my mind I wasn't going to leave the ship Bruce Ismay stood on B deck and kept calling out all women and children come to B deck I went up twice, it was so cold. I thought myself, idiotic, I'm going back. And I went back twice to A deck and sat down until finally Bruce Ismay spied me, he called out to me and he said, all women and children, I thought had left the ship, come up here. And I walked up to B deck and Bruce Ismay picked me up. It was almost as if I was a a rat terrier, and threw me down a little winding iron staircase. I fell down the iron staircase and found myself between a line of sailors on either side. I'm a prisoner in my own skirt. I can't even walk, much less get up to that rail and then jump across the ocean into a lifeboat. Oh, not me. I'm not an acrobat. But he says, you'll have to. And as I stood there arguing with him, 
And I had my little pig, mind you, under my arm. A sailor came along. He said, yeah, now you can do as you want, but I'm going to save your baby. And he grabbed the pig, threw it into the lifeboat. So I turned around to Mr. Monk and I said, that settles it. Here I go. I don't know how I'm going to go, but I've got to go. I'm going to follow that pig. I promised my mother. Well, he may have thought I was insane. Nobody knew what the pig meant to me. So he made a cradle of his hands with another gentleman. I sat on his hands, put my arms around his neck, and he threw me head foremost through space. And I fell on the bottom of this, the boat and kept looking and looking for my pig. I found him with his broken, poor little legs broken and his nose gone. Well, made me feel very badly, but I kind of turned him. I found he was still playing music, so that was all right. I managed to find a place on the gunwale and found that I was the next to last passenger in the last lifeboat and the only lifeboat that was full. 68 passengers, about one third of them nearly children. That was the only lifeboat that carried the children. But as we left the ship, the four lines were knotted. We cut them with a knife. We struck the water. The ship stood there, fully lighted, music playing. In our lifeboat, we had three sets of oars, perfectly useless. The ocean was just as flat, well, as a bathtub. I never saw a lake quite that flat inky black night, starlit, and not a ripple in the sea. And the kind of cold that your skin seemed to congeal. And there I was, with nothing on practically, just about freezing to death. I sat on the gunwale, and the children were crying and whimpering. It suddenly struck me, I believe I'll play music, and then the little children maybe will be diverted and amused. And there I sat, and all night long, I played the machich. And the poor little children were so interested in the music box that most of them stopped crying. <laughs> 